Today on Media Lair Sandwich, we talked to... Terry Bean. And what was he do? Well, he's a speaker, and he's a motivational person, and he's a marketer, and a networker, and... And a, a podcaster, and he mostly talks about... Network. Networking. Yeah, one of those... Yeah, that that's important. Yeah. Welcome to Media Lure Sandwich. I'm Toden from Toden.com and of course YouTube.com slash Toden K. With me is Crazy Mark from CrazyMark.com. I thought it was Mark Monster. Uh, it depends what mood I'm in. <sighs> well, speaking of monsters, we're talking to someone that tackles several monsters, uh, whether it's uh, writing a book, um, which, uh, oh, I didn't even ask you about that in the pre-interview, uh, or dealing with several different platforms, including podcasting and tutorial. You know what, Terry, you just take it. What, what, what do you do, Terry? And who you are know- you? <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. For a long time on my LinkedIn profile, it said, if you ask 10 people what does Terry Bean do, you'll get 10 smiles and nine different answers. So what does Terry do? I don't know. What doesn't Terry do would be a lot easier to answer, man. I, uh, I started business networking, and I started a large group here in the Detroit area called Motor City Connect. I did that. I don't know, 11 years ago or so. And as a result of some of that really early online networking piece, I was on LinkedIn in 04 and Facebook in 06 and Twitter in 08. And everybody thought I was a marketer because social media was the way to market. But man, all I just did was wanted to help people, wanted to connect people, wanted to get people dialed in new opportunities. So that's been my world. I do some coaching. I do some speaking, do a little bit of training. uh, And now I'm running a technology company or two or three, which is all very fun. So we have, you take a jump off point. We can talk about any one of those things. Okay. So you talk about, so you said you do tutorials or some teaching and speaking on what? So the started off on business networking, right? Because what happens when you run a networking group, instantly you start to see a lot of people do shit wrong, right? And the only way to get them to do it better is to tell them what they should do. Because you think back in your college or high school or any of the classes you may have taken, there was nothing about networking and how to do that. So having done it for 10 years prior to when I started Motor City Connect, I had the opportunity to gain some experience, some good tips on what to do, some even better tips on what to avoid at all costs. And I like being in front of people. I like the opportunity to share. And so I started creating content that I knew was relevant. So we talked a lot about social media, talk a lot about leadership, started talking about law of attraction and how that relates to our world. So any one of those conversations is always fun to me. My favorite talk was called Six Degrees of Connectedness. I got to do that as a TEDx Detroit talk way back in 2009. TEDx Detroit's a, another portion of what I do. I'm on the advisory board for that and put on the first one and the second one and all the way up to what's going to be the 10th one this year. So amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm very glad to have you on and get, and me and you gave me a chance to, you know, check out your podcast, which congratulations on episode 100, by the way. Thank you. I owe that all to Janet E. Johnson, man. She just keeps us on track. Good to have a a good partner, as you guys already know. Oh, yeah. It would be nice if one of the three, uh, uh, including William, if one of us did not have ADHD, that would probably help us out a little bit. But uh, (laughs) it keeps things interesting. She keeps uh, she keeps me on task and focused because oh, otherwise gee. I'm all over the place. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, you, indeed. Now we we have several. Now I know you can't read our our banner. Video version is different than the audio version. Um, but on it we have a couple of our top focuses we like to talk about, and one of them is networking. And uh, um, you said you know we're often told what to do, mm-hmm. you know, and. Now, I did, I was told how to network in college. Well, not maybe not college, Specs Howard. But again, in college, when I went to a real college, uh, an actual university, they still went back into, oh, this is how you should network. And um, now, when I actually started networking, you know, going through things like the Hangouts and YouTube gatherings and convention after convention after convention after job fair you know all all the damn all all the things um you know the things we're told wear a tie and wear you know and be and and be 
<laughs> Sorry, um, that was a visceral response. I had one of those on and once in the last 12 years. It was horrible. I, I, I found spiking my hair in Liberty Spikes works better for, for attention to make a... Um, <laughs> First impression, baby. Making that's all it's about. And it's a memorable one. So when were you at Specs? When did you, uh, when were you there? Oh, seven. Oh, seven. Okay. So I, it's, that would have been a little bit before. I have a couple of friends that were there. Uh, Heather Coleman Voss and Ron Marshall. Oh, yeah. Teaching. Did, in, I, I, Heather. I know Heather. Yeah. She's awesome, dude. She's awesome. I'm a big fan of hers. She might have been one of the people talking about networking. Who knows? Um, no, she. Um, I believe she was one of the people that would start a class and leave to go do kickboxing in one of the studios while the students taught ourselves. <laughs> That, that might not be the same Heather. Dude. I don't <laughs> Wait a minute, isn't that like a lot of teachers out there? Come on. Maybe huh? it is. Hey, you know what? It's empowering to do self-study. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, okay, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. But self, speaking of self-study, like what? Go to a website for some tutorials or something? Yeah, uh, that sounds you know. like Ignite. Ignites your learning. Yeah, you know what? So uh, the the guy I met you with, Steve Sadler, mm-hmm. right? And I, I was just with him. He said he's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. So we'll we'll tease. Super oh, I'm so Steve looking up. forward uh, to talking to him, dude. He is one sharp cookie, no doubt. But he built Ignite Cast like 16, 17 years ago now, and he built it because he was running around teaching all his uh, engineering team and some of their clients how to use Katia. And he's like, there's got to be a better way. So he sat down and created a course authoring tool where you could make your own training based on screenshots and pictures and stitch some video together. And all of a sudden he was showing it to one of his clients to teach him Katia. And they're like, uh, we want this. And he's like, yeah, I know you got Katia. He's like, no, no, no. We want this tool. Where, where did you get this? He's like, oh, I made it. And so as a result, like two weeks later, talk about the accidental entrepreneur. Next thing you know, he's in business selling licensing the training software. And back then, you know, e-learning was kind of a thing, but it wasn't Mm -hmm. like it is today. So he's been pretty revolutionary on a lot of different products and a lot of different technologies. He built something that was Hootsuite before it was Hootsuite. He built TwitPick before TwitPick existed. Um, He's Hey, he's built so much stuff. So we're we're putting together a nice little technology fund that we're going to be growing out, and it's going to be an exciting time, man. Oh man, if that's not an awesome uh, uh, teaser trailer for in a couple of weeks, I don't know what. It is. I know you got to set your boy up every now and again. Yeah. You know how it is. I've been, you know, we you talk about Specs Howard. If you listen to the radio now. Everything they do is that teaser thing. Hey, in two minutes, we're going to come talk about this. Stay tuned. All right, that's what they yeah, got to do. But let me ask you something about Ignite. On, on the average, how many subscribers a week do you get with this site? That's a great, great question. You know, it's funny you ask because we just changed the site, and, and the conversation between the team was, we haven't gotten any signups since we changed the site. I think something's broken. So we were averaging, you know, not a lot, maybe four or five new people signing up every day. And so all of a sudden, when you're getting no emails from four or five a day, it's a problem, right? So what does that end up being? 20 to 30? But that's a that's a better numbers add up. And and, and, yeah, yeah. and And I often tell creators that numbers game will drive a person absolutely insane. But if you see something completely off, there's something that's probably completely off. Yep, and you <coughs> YouTube, <laughs> <Freaking> YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, YouTube just sent me an email saying I won't be getting any more money from them. Now, to be clear, I've never gotten any money from them, so <laughs> that didn't really impact my life in any way, shape, or form. In the past like two months, I've lost almost a thousand subscribers. Holy shit! Why? Um, I from all I could tell is um, from the people that go, hey, I don't remember unsubscribing to you, uh, and also not mention search engines and algorithms don't aren't exactly in our favor anymore. Yo, so basically, you're saying you're not paying the YouTube gods enough to keep your people. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Thanks, there, Mother Google. Very kind of you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Alphabet. Let's say no, right. but honestly, yeah, I got the same letter, and I just go, eh, time to cash out my I don't know how many thousands of bucks that have gathered since 2005. 
Wow. <laughs> if it's on, they don't pay you until it hits a hundred. I don't believe so. They don't. Uh, what a hundred thousand? No, hundred dollars. No, they pay <laughs> uh, when mine, it hits a hundred. Mine is people. like yeah, taxable. Really? Yeah. That's good. Taxable. You know. You, well, you know what? We need people like you, man, to contribute to the economy. That's good. That's because so, I've never claimed you. anything from YouTube, and now I will. And well, good. Oh, well, <laughs> I've always, I've always. Uh, did that on my taxes. I always wrote down all the money I got from YouTube. Well, no, I never but... got paid from YouTube. Oh, well, then I never I collected let it, from he's YouTube. Let it, he's he's letting know. it roll, baby. He's, uh, he's big gambling. So, so yeah. If if that's an issue, where will you go next? You guys are you guys are in it to win it. So do you stay on YouTube or do you like? We're looking at other platforms. We're playing with some other platforms. Um, there is another platform that should be coming. Well, there's one that's already out that we're gonna play with a little bit. I um. I think we. I'm not sure if uh, we talked. I know I talked about it with a couple people at the um, um, at the gathering I met you at. In fact, I, that's how I learned about it. Was uh, uh, was there about DTube and their cryptocurrency? Um, I'm not. I, I'm going to play with it more. I'm not. I don't see that getting popular with general population. But there's another platform that be coming out in a few months. That company actually just won like a million dollar lawsuit against. Oh, against a studio so they're having this huge launch party and we're already um signed on as beta testers once they get into beta testing yeah. speaking of dedication <laughs> i want to get back to you terry give me like a success me. story from one of your like say for example you you like to help people out motivationally or business wise give me a success story a really great juicy success story from your past here or recent yeah. Oh, man, there's been a few. You know, I think one of the cool things that I've had the opportunity to do uh, was help some nonprofits really kind of get some get some mm -hmm. visibility in the community. And not that they didn't have it, but nonprofits, if you're not United Way or March of Dimes or something huge, Red Crossy, you, you kind of ebb and flow. You find a groove, you lose the groove. Um, a guy named John George. He runs an organization called Blightbusters, Motor City Blightbusters. Right. And on. They, oh yes. You know who that? You guys know they started. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and um, we believe another guest on the show is actually teaming up with um, the the uh, um, uh, I love uh, I love Detroit. Oh, yeah, I heard that Detroit. Guy. Well, well, it, it was it was lo love you Detroit. That's yeah. It. Love you Detroit. Love you Detroit. I believe he's uh, trying to partner up with them if he's not already partnered up. Yeah, so back in back in 07 time frame, I met John, and it was one of the first times I'd ever been in someone's conference room where somebody walked in, and their energy just blew mine <laughs> right out the door, right? And I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he does, but I got to I gotta get me some of this. This is really cool. And so John, for 28 years now, has been tearing down cracked out houses and revitalizing the neighborhood that's known as Old Redford up in Northwest Detroit, basically six mile or Grand River and Lasser in that six square block area, you know, where the Brightmore district is. And he's been just making an impact on that corner. So I've brought dozens and well, hundreds of volunteers out for days where we would spend the day you'd get there and there'd be this framed out house and you'd leave and there'd be a pile of dirt man mm. and it was cool to watch these houses get toppled over and 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 really you just felt like you were making such an impact even it was just this one little thing but it was cool to bring people you know 2008 2009 2010 um suburbanites going into the city for anything that didn't involve a sport ball or mm -hmm. a puck wasn't wasn't that likely right so to have these guys going down and in and, and, and making a difference in the community that uh that always made me smile man. yeah i in fact our other host william from all about william who isn't here today he actually just hey, did something um that may have just uh, made brightmore even more livable he moved oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was a bad one. Two or from. Yeah, he uh, from Brightmore. He, that's oh. where he was living. Yeah, so that that was cool. Um, part of the work that tied into that ended up creating this thing called 313D Love, mm -hmm. which uh, ended up trending worldwide on the Twitters back in like 11 or 12, um, and ended up becoming a proclamation where March 13th was officially known as Detroit Day, signed by the governor. That was kind of cool. Just to get some sort of rallying cry around the city, because, again, years ago, 
nobody cared, right? And when I had Motor City Connect on, people would be like, you're going to have to turn the lights off when they close the city. You know that, right? And I don't, I don't live in the city. I never claim to live in the city, but I claim to care about people. And you know, we were talking about the secret earlier. James Arthur Ray said, if you can get 1% of 1% of a population to focus their energy in a different way, you can change what's going on in the city. So I used to meditate on that, and I used to call out and talk to people about what could be and have conversations because really mathematically it was less than 40 people that you needed to impact to have a shift mm -hmm. in consciousness and so it was it was really cool to see what's going on now because it's a whole different place it's a whole different place Unless you're, you know, in Brighton. I haven't been up there in a while. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. So when you say, so in which way did you help them? Was it marketing? Was it networking? I know you said you went up there with your own two hands and did stuff, which is amazing. But what other ways did you make an impact? So, you know, Mark will make fun of me a little bit. And I don't, again, I don't claim to be a motivational guy by any stretch of the imagination. Let me guess. You but ate spinach and you hit the house and it turned into a lumber <laughs> yard, right? It's it's it. The dun, goons dun, came dun, out. Dun, 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 dun. I hit the house. Boom! The lumber flies up and lands in a neat pile, ready to sell. I'm so happy. I I, I didn't <laughs> hand you the ukulele. I'm very happy. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. We have an opportunity to be listening to ukulele right now instead of listening to me. You guys are doing this all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. please, uh, please continue, Terry. <laughs> so, you know, it really, it was about hosting events. It was bringing people down. It was changing the narrative. It was making a conversation about instead of looking for all the crap, which is really easy to see back then, it's look for what's good. You could drive through a neighborhood in 2007, 2008 in Detroit, cracked out house, blown out house, no house, big empty field, house with a nice yard that was freshly cut and flowers on it. Cracked out house, jacked up house, people laying on the porch doing nothing, mm -hmm. house that somebody actually cared about. So oh, wait, you passed looking. the house I used to live in. I was like on the porch <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> see, I see all these houses knocked over and, and all this space not being used. I wonder, you know, okay, people try to start urban farming, but I, I'm looking for a place where I can have chickens. Why can't I have I chickens in Detroit? There's all these abandoned houses. Why can't I just say, that's my land. I want to put my chickens here. I know and that goats. is like way different of a, of a narrative here, but I just need a place. <laughs> I just, I'm looking for a place where I can have. 20 chickens where no one's going to bother me. <laughs> I wish that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> I'm like life goals, baby. 20 chickens, yes. damn it. Eggs. I've got, I got friends in like Howell. They've got chickens, man. They, okay. Yeah. We're, we're looking at, we're looking at uh, new Boston and Romulus and, is there it did i mean seriously when you're looking for a place are you checking the chicken specs on yes the, on the home yes I, but my girlfriend already has 20 chickens she really yes so that, that that's an actual eggs thing on <laughs> eggs, eggs on toad oh baby. all the Mark, eggs have you had the, have you had all the eggs, the eggs across had, the have, counters <laughs> and filling up the fridge so many eggs <laughs> Cock a doodle do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, three of them are roosters. <laughs> your, your cholesterol may be shit, but you'll never go hungry. <laughs> eggs, eggs, eggs. I want more eggs. Awesome. Where's the egg man? So when we're helping people networking, well, what are the goals? What's the focus of networking besides trying to make yourself money? What, what, what's, what's the real goal when you go into a room full of people that's a mixer? So if you're if you're doing it right, you've got you've got two things that you're fully aware of, right? It's what you have to offer first and foremost. What can I give to these people? They can and, look at my boyish, awesome looks. Yes, I am a handsome lad, and look how pretty I am. Um, and the second thing is, what are you trying to get, right? Mm -hmm. And it and it really needs to be in that order because. Mary Kay Ash popularized a saying by Teddy Roosevelt years ago that was, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the easiest way to show people that you care in a networking scenario is to figure out how you can help them. What, 
who you can connect them to, what sort of knowledge do they need, you know, what what's a good business partner, a good customer, whatever the case may be. Maybe they need an employee, maybe they need a job, whatever the case is, you got to be there ready, willing, and able to help. And most people don't think about all the things that they already have inside of them that can provide that assistance. We've all got specialized knowledge. We've all got some level of time. We've got some level of energy, and that could be to go knock down a house or to write a check or whatever the case may be, right? We've got the network that we've already got. I mean, you know, some people have thousands of subscribers on a YouTube channel. Well, maybe like a thousand less than they had before, but some people <laughs> yeah. have that stuff, right? And you got that level of influence. Sorry, dude, that was, that was, <laughs> oh, man. That was kind of a dick thing to say. No, 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 that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. But I mean, it's, it's, it's being willing and able to give first. And that's what really needs to happen from a, from a networking perspective. It's what can I do for you? Then it's what can you do for me? Because ultimately what you're trying to find out is what can we do together? Yeah, it, it goes back to if you have a zero budget, barting, but the barter system never dies. Even if you have a good budget, the barter system doesn't, you know, it, when the biggest things you can get, you know, you can work for someone is favor for favor. And there is no undercutting a favor. I mean, when especially if it's something that you're really into. For all of us on a shoestring, that's the ideal way to go. Uh, absolutely, and it's just smart, right? And it and it builds better partnerships. It builds better relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about I talk about the reason that networking actually works is two universal laws: the law of reciprocity and the law of generosity. Law of reciprocity basically states: as I do well by you, you're going to go out of your way to return the favor and do well by me. You're going to reciprocate. The law of generosity basically states is I do well by others. The universe is paying attention and it's going to reward me in some way, shape or form. Maybe not directly proportional and, and maybe not from the person that I just helped, but it's going to come back. Right. It's karma. It's plain and simple. So I don't know. I've I've seen that law, those both laws, and there's a third law called Murphy's Law, and I've noticed that works more well with me than <laughs> all those reciprocatory and obligatory and karmicatory and whatever it is. You know, I've tried a lot of that in the past, and maybe that's why I don't go out shooting bands anymore, videotaping people, yeah. thinking that karma is going to come back and reward me, which is a load of uh, BS. You know, I, I pretty much I don't go out anymore unless there's contracts and money involved. And, you know, and I get that. Mm -hmm. in, in just I'm sorry, Tone, mm -hmm. but real quick. It's it. Unfortunately, you're right to the extent that it isn't proportional in what we make the mistake of saying, well, my time is worth this and my energy toward this is worth that. So if it doesn't come back in that form, we like discount it all together. What we have to realize is that there's some negative shit that was probably going to happen to you that you totally avoided by doing something good. But we don't think about that. We only look for the good. We don't look at what we missed out on as a result. If you're a young gun and you want to go out and build up your portfolio or do something like that, that's fine. But once you get, you know, there's an old thing where after you've done so much that you have to, you know, you get burnt out. Yeah, and there's definitely, you know, I've been to a lot of different networking things, and there's definitely uh, uh, times and and that you're gonna feel very discouraged. When I go to a a thing where people are walking around, they all have their business cards in hands, which is fine. But when they literally walk down a line, handing everyone a business card, not talking to you, not, you know, <laughs> a vending machine. Hey, hey here's one. Here's one. It's it's, you know, it's very. And that's right. all you run into. Like, oh, hey, <laughs> hey, I looked up your, you know, you gave me your business card yesterday. I looked you up. Oh, my God. I want to talk to you about this on your video. And they're all about talking to themselves. And they're like, hey, you know, what? I did something similar to this. Can do you have advice? Well, What's your channel? Yeah, never mind. I'm never, and then I'm never gonna look at your channel. 
it, it just feels so much time wasted, you know, and it seems like for every maybe 10 of those people, you might get that one person that uh, uh, that you really connect with. But it does make it worth it. And it, she's it, drunk. It does, and especially if you get... <laughs> and hopefully easy. Especially if you get, you know, two or three of those people around in a circle, you'll notice that the attitude, not kind of circle you're thinking of. <laughs> Shut up. There's uh, no cookie. <laughs> The, the attitude spreads. Positivity breeds positivity. <laughs> when you're at work and you got like two or three people complaining, <laughs> shut up, Mark. Uh, <laughs> telling each other to shut up. It breeds more negativity. But if you got people that are positive, it, it's really... <laughs> I don't even know he's laughing at anymore. It I'm thinking of that Frank Zappa song. You got to go back to Weasel's "Rip My Flesh." Oh no! You know I some. You know some it. of us were born after um, yeah. '79 and don't know much about <laughs> Frank Zappa is a legend. Weasel's "Rip hey, My Flesh." So oh, when you no, get Sadler on, just a, just another heads up and another tease. One of our business partners is Ahmet Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, dude. He talks about him all the stick. I, I believe he actually talked about him when uh, uh, when I was talking to him sure at, the, at the meetup. I'm sure he did. So of all the musical legends that you could have picked, dude, that's the one. <laughs> that's awesome. So channel that two weeks from now. All back right. to the back to the piece. The amount mm-hmm. of givers versus the amount of takers. Hey, Mark, can you pull up your greater than and less than so we can have that visual? <laughs> we're gonna probably we won't be able okay, to explain it otherwise. Yeah, it's it's you got to make sure that the givers. Here's are all the, the givers in here. Yeah, but wait no, a minute, there's a lot of takers no, in there too. That's all the takers right there, dude. Yeah. yeah, the givers are on the they're on the smaller side. So the number the numbers game is kind of a pain. And again, I go back to the idea that people just don't know how to do it. What happens is if you're a sales guy working for a company. Your boss is telling you, go out and network because you got to get some business. You got to close some shit this month. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. So go network. That's the wrong thing to do at a networking event. It's not a sales event, it's an opportunity to create relationships and further relationships. Oh, that's so that's about. what I had been seeing. Nothing but like sales events. The, the sales event <laughs> networking <broken>. thing, <laughs> the one thing that I found was great about those is usually they have an open bar. <laughs> Which, <laughs> hey, has never been a problem. I like open bars. I Even a cash bar isn't bad. As long as yeah. there's enough booze, anybody's interested. So That's I was looking joke. through your plat, the different platforms or sites you're involved with. You're in, was it? It said you were involved with a relationship site. Does this have to do with dating service or something? I have no idea what you're talking about. So I'm going to go with no is my initial okay, response. Okay, so you have maybe nothing to do with business dating. relationship. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, probably, yeah. Because maybe, maybe I, I read it wrong. I did know? read that you wrote books around right. the subject. I have. I've written a book called Be Connected, and mm-hmm. it's all about the five things you need to know before, during, after, online, and why networking works. So it's all networking related. It's pretty simple. I, I, I wrote a book that I'd want to read, which means that I don't think there's anything longer than three pages from a section of it, because I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I don't want to say I'm busy because that's not accurate, but short attention span, right? I'm Mm -hmm. always trying to move on to the next thing, which is why when you say, what do I do? It's like, what don't I do? I do all kinds of cool stuff, but I get to hang out and talk to cool people and figure out Mm -hmm. ways to be of service. Okay. So um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that you do not have a full-time job, (laughs) Uh, a traditional job. Let me put it that way. Yeah, no, no. Shh, my wife's right upstairs. She doesn't like hearing that. No, I, uh, I no, I, 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 I don't. Um, I, I'm not necessarily psychologically unemployable, but I'm, you know, psychologically unemployable. I'm not. I, I do really well for bursts of time, and then I get kind of bored, and then I want to move on to something else and do really well with that which is why doing this technology fund mm-hmm. that we're building out is perfect because there's multiple touch points. There's, there's the work that you need to do for the company and for the clients. Then there's the finding the clients and then there's the finding the investors and there's working on the strategic plan in each of the individual marketing plans for the company. There's finding talent and bringing mm-hmm. people in and strategic partners. So it's not like if I had to do the same thing three days in a row, 
I would probably lose it. So Uh-oh. how do you make all this networking on all these projects? How do you make it profitable for you? Because that's the question that, that we're going to be asked. How is this guy living? How is this guy making any money? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the goal. Just like we like, just like when they say, hey, you're a podcaster. Hey, you just had your 100th episode and you're doing pretty decent. How do you make your money at it? I, usually that's when we laugh, but that's the popular question. Sure. And if, uh, you know, I wish I was making more money at that. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You're making money? Um, I'm not podcasting? Yeah, right. Huh? No. That's yeah, cool. you're clever. <laughs> <laughs> I, make, I make money podcasting when we talk about the idea of thinking about advertising. And then you realize that's not really making money. That's talking about making money. It's totally different. Um, you know what? I do, I do a lot of consulting. I do a lot of coaching. And that's, that's the actual work. I get paid to speak. Right? I don't, I don't really show up and speak anymore. You know, Mark, you were talking about, you know, going and recording bands and in the line is always the same thing. It'll be great for exposure. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I was any more exposed, uh, I'd be naked. Right. I don't need more exposure. I need, well, hear I need more yeah. consistent. Right. So, Come on, bring your band to the bar. You got, I can't pay you guys, but you, but you can be, uh, uh, but you'll get great exposure. Okay. Uh, cool. I'll do that party. Saturday night, but on Sunday, Sunday night, I need you to come to my house party. Bring we can't beer. pay you. Bring all your beer. Um, <laughs> we can't pay you, but you'll get burgers. great exposure for all your wings and beer that you're going to bring. Burgers. That yeah, is the barter burger. system at its finest. I wish it worked like that. Because you'd probably do that, right? Be like, <laughs> In an ideal right, world. We could come play for a couple <laughs> hours. You're going to bring a keg or two and a couple of bottles and some burgers. I'm in. That's a decent trade, man. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's it, man. It's, it's, it's figuring out what to say no to. And that's a really difficult thing for people, especially if you're a a giving type of person, because here's the deal. There's a limit to what you can give because you only have so much time to give, but there's zero limit on what people will take. I hear that. When do you say no? Um, I've got some pretty strong guiding principles in my life that if it doesn't match what I'm trying to do and focus on it, I say no without thinking about it. Don't even have to consider it because it's outside of my wheelhouse. If it's going to take longer than 10 minutes, I'm going to say no, right? Because if it's, especially if it's maybe inside of that, or if it's helping somebody else and I just don't have the time, I have a tendency to say no to somebody who's asked for help in the past that's received help in the past from me and hasn't done anything with it, that shit pisses me off, right? If I'm going to take time and energy and and go out of my way to serve you and you're going to just like fluff it off, we're, we're cool. I'm going to be nice to you, but I'm not going to help you. Yeah. You remember that whole two hour counseling session we had? Can we just do that again? (laughs) It's, my needs have changed, so. Oh, know, oh! I, w- I, I wish I would have had that answer. My needs have changed. It's like, well, I kind of blew it off, and I forgot what you said. <laughs> yeah, no. my needs have changed. At least, at least someone's, you know, it, thinking you're taking steps and moving forward, right? But, yeah. But, look, looking back at that ignite site, you know, Toad and I were getting a little bit geeked about that because it mm-hmm. has a way of making learning specific for employees in that specific company. It isn't like, oh, go out and learn something in college or whatever and come back to us. It's something that gathers information that is germane to that business practice. You know, what's really cool about that site, not only is the learning quite specific, the knowledge capture piece of it is really cool too, right? So in, in anyone could go to ignitecast.com, they could download the software, and they could be creating a, a tool or training tool within minutes. I've put up a handful of different trainings on LinkedIn and on leadership and on being more productive. And and it takes you, it took me 45 minutes to an hour to put some of these together. And I mean, they're not like, oh my God, this is way high level presentation grade material, but it's good content. It's easy to use. It's got the voiceover. It's got the images. It's got the video tied into it. And, and you can make something that impacts somebody's life right now and what's really really important especially from corporate america's side a lot of people getting older right a lot of people are going to retire and when they retire all that institutional knowledge is walking right out the door 
right? And so how are they going to train the youngins that are coming up and filling those spots? If they don't capture that knowledge before those people leave, it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. So that part of the tool really, really excites me. But there's the ability to do quizzes, right? So you can set up questions to make sure that people actually took the time to go through the training and learn something. You can set a minimum score that they have to get. You can see how long they were in there. So there's some really cool analytics in it as well. Uh, does it cost anything to download the tools to create the tutorials? No, not at all. Not at all. So if you're going to share multiple tutorials, that's when there's a price. Right. And we're and we're working on the pricing again because we go back and forth, right? There's a there's a you have to have some level of freemium but how much is that freemium? Yeah, I, I love how it's targeted towards companies and how they can really, you know, it's not just, you know, because a lot of companies will be like, oh, hey, we have X amount of accounts for Linda. So when it comes your turn, you take these Linda courses and you do this this way. They can be like, here's the courses we, we, you know, we made our own course for our employees that's very directed. Uh, I think the fact that the company can have that kind of control, I, uh, freaking brilliant. Well, and, and what's even, take it one step further, there are customers of ours that have it white labeled, right? So their employees have no idea that it's not their specific system for mm -hmm. them doesn't say ignite cast at all it's you're gonna we're gonna create the content it's gonna stay inside it's you know inside of their firewall so it lives in their ecosystem as mm -hmm. opposed to out there in the world so they have total control of the content which is pretty cool too as an option so you're saying that it's a possibility I might have taken uh, um, an online course because I've taken several online courses that my company has pointed me to towards other, you know, other companies and stuff like that, such as Extron and Tessera and, or Biamp, whatever. I'm an audiovisual guy, so sometimes I have to take other companies, you know, tests, be certified in playing with their systems. Um but you're saying there's a possibility that I could have uh, taken something that's originated on IgniteCast and have no idea. It's possible. Yeah, sure. See, that's because... really cool. That that's that's brilliant. You know, that's brilliant right there. Because it's okay to not always get credit because your because your because your audience is the corporate world and your you know your finish line is is making money and being used and helping people it's not getting on the face of a home page of a website like youtube or something it's you know it's a different finish line and that's okay <laughs> some people yeah. say it's a lot better <laughs> don't don't get me wrong right branding is important and and having people recognize what you're doing is relative and it's a good way to grow the business but ultimately if 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 making money or building your brand is the only thing that's driving you, you're going to be irritated. I don't care if we're talking about going to a networking mm -hmm. event or building a business as an entrepreneur. If you don't have a why that's stronger than those two things, it doesn't really matter anymore because you're going to get frustrated and you're going to end up turning to something else because that, that pull is, isn't strong enough, right? So that's why I keep going back to being of service to other people. That's what drives. Uh oh, because it's time for uh -oh. yeah, right. It's time for questions what? from a hat. Yes, questions oh. that, from a hat. That, that, then we plug you, and then we you know plug plug you full of holes, and then yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait, we had inside. Yeah, up we're, we're I'm kind of. I'm plugged. not sure how we, we're plugging uh -oh. here anymore. Yeah, mm. questions from the hat. Oh, and they have two hats for those of you that are visually impaired right now. One hat. Yeah, hat Mark's wearing, but the other hat. Okay, let's show them the hat. Oh, I think oh. This is the other hat. The the oh, for yeah. for the audio yeah, listeners, right. the hat that we pull the questions out of is like sort of a Dr. Seuss hat, except for it's black and white with skulls on it. Because well, that's what I had laying around. That's, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a hell of a lid. Okay, and uh, um, if people submit questions, we will say your name when we pick the questions. Uh, we need more people to submit questions, or else we're going to stop this whole section. Which maybe that's what people want. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think this is a fantastic question. Oh, for you, look, Terry. you prefer frog legs or spam? No, just joking. <laughs> they, uh, they both taste like chicken. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully, not your girlfriend's chickens, though. Oh. <laughs> and hopefully, not, not my 
not me because I'm a toad. But oh. Because toad, and, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe they just taste like beans. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. So here's, That's I awkward. think this question's good, good for this conversation. So, Terry, what can you tell us that you can't tell anybody else about? Preferably about the business wow. and how you make money, not... Not other weird things, part of the world. <laughs> what, what can I? What What was the question? What can, what can I you, tell you? Uh, what can you tell us that you haven't really told anyone else? I'm wow. changing the wording because they can't tell anyone. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm changing the wording to what can you? Uh, what can you tell us that you haven't really told anybody else about uh, um, about your platforms, about your business, about what you do? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something that's kind of personal about me, which is okay. kind of a, a, a difficult piece, right? As a as a speaker, as an author, as a guy that runs a very large networking group, as a guy that's built a handful of businesses and is continuing to grow them, I'm a terrific promoter of other things. But when it comes to talking about me, it absolutely creeps me out. I have a really hard time, which is if you go back through the conversation, you'll notice how many times I've turned it back and asked you questions because I don't like talking about me. And it's not that I'm private and it's not that I'm not fairly interesting and haven't done a bunch of cool shit. It just doesn't seem genuine to me. I, I, I can't learn anything new with my mouth open. If I'm talking, I'm not learning. And I'm much more interested in figuring out who you are, who the people are that I'm talking to, so I can make some connections and ghost out. So that's, that's, I don't know if that answers your question fairly, but that's a pretty sincere answer. Yeah, I, I think that's a great answer. And I think that's a great, great information. Um, I, I think it's fantastic. Ghosting out. I like that one. Ghost yeah, I mean, so many times people say, you know what? If you just listen to people, they feel way more connected to you. Yeah. Um, I remember one of my first times I, I was preparing to go to a networking event, and I was you know, like, hey, I, I should make something with my brand on it to hand hand out. And I asked somebody, hey, what, what do you think I should hand out besides business cards? Like, make, you know, I eventually made bandanas and stuff. Pancakes. Um, pancakes. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and... and uh, um, and someone gave me some great information. Like, it doesn't matter what you hand out. In fact, maybe you shouldn't hand out anything. It's not what you give people. It's how you make them feel. On LinkedIn, eight hours ago today, I posted, it is important that people feel heard, respected, and cared about. Right? That was a status update. So you talk about the importance of listening. It's so true, man. They just... They feel so much better about you. I talk about the idea that if you want to be the single best conversationalist anyone's ever talked to, spend 10 minutes talking to them, spend eight and a half minutes talking about them, and spend a minute and a half about you. Because everybody's favorite topic is the same. What's your favorite topic? All right. So it's pretty simple to go and have those conversations, and people will walk away going, man, that was a great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> And then, okay, so I got one more question for you, Terry. Another good Simpsons episode, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, um, last question I have for you. If someone – what's a question you wish you were asked more? How much money can I give you right now? That would be an amazing <laughs> question to get asked more. That would be – like I can tell Mark's all about that question, Amen, right? brother. Amen. You know, how much money can I give you right now would be a great question. Um, yeah, I'm sticking with that. <laughs> okay, so let's say, you know, you, you're talking about your book or, or, or you're, you're networking and, and you just um, – Oh man, it's so hard for now. I gotta lead up to actually set up a scenario. Let's say you're giving a speech or you're working with somebody to promote them on a consultation. What what do you're like? Why aren't you asking me about X? Uh, um, you know, I it's interesting. I have a, a you know, I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree. Um people don't ask me about my educational background ever. Hmm. Right? And so And that includes us. We did not ask uh, um yeah. Not extra. yeah. So, it, 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 so yeah. Please extol. What? Tell us about your how. What did you? What's your associate's degree? What's what's my? I don't have one. Okay, your bachelor's. So I had a bachelor's in psychology, 
And then uh, as a, just out of dumb luck, I was drinking way too much one night and filled out a graduate assistantship application that I totally forgot filling out. And four days before I was moving back to Minneapolis, where I had lived for junior high and high school, I got a letter in the mail that said, congratulations, you've been accepted into this graduate assistantship program. You can be part of the School of Communications. So I ended up studying business communications and you know, got most of it paid for by the university and got them to pay me to teach classes as a, as a, a 22-year-old not even remotely ready to be teaching anything to anybody. <laughs> well, that's how uh, you learn to, yeah. I mean, when I was an assistant teacher for a couple of years and it was, it was really fun. <laughs> well, it's I shouldn't say it was really fun in a certain way. It was, but it was very educational for myself. And, and especially when I was, uh, cause I was paired with people, um, that I knew more about a particular side of a subject than they did. Um, cause my classes were only like 20 people big. I don't know how, if you're at a major university, I'm sure your classes were a lot bigger than that. I'm assuming. Well, it's, I taught one of the recitations, right? We, they had mandatory classes at Eastern Michigan university. There were four of them. Mm -hmm. And one of them was speech communications, which was basically public speaking. So they had a big auditorium lecture, 300 people. And then they had a 24 to 30 person group breakout where you had to go to that class as well. And as the TA, you taught that smaller class. And, but it was, I mean, it was like, you were the teacher, man. They, 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 they scored you at the end of the year. You graded them during, <laughs> I don't have any business doing this. I'm not sure I have any business doing it now, but it was, <laughs> it was a trip, man. It was a trip. Awesome. I, I, so I guess that's something that people don't know. I don't think I've ever talked about that in like in the public way. I don't talk about that during presentations or anything. So that's fun. <laughs> Great. I'm so glad we did. we did some digging there. Yeah, that was fun. We yeah. I, I love trying to find questions that you can't find on someone's Wikipedia page. And I don't know if you have a Wikipedia page. I didn't check. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, you know what? I need to because you talk about a fun scenario. For a long time, if you were to Google Terry Bean, you would get my my face would show up and my links to whatever my world would be five or six of the 10 on page one. Uh, the only other people that were showing up, there's a harmonica player down in like, I, I forget if he's in New Orleans or in Memphis. There's a fine artist down in either New Orleans or Memphis. And then there was a there was a political guy that was a money bundler. Yep, that was Democratic number one Party. person that came up when I searched uh, your name. All right, uh, where, where can people find you, Terry? So the, the simplest place to find me right now is if you go to trybean.com, T-R-Y-B-E-A-N.com. That's my website. It's got links to my virtual presence. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. I'm certainly active on Facebook. I'm getting more active again on Twitter after a very long hiatus. Um, but yeah, man, and I'm happy to connect with, with people pretty much anywhere. A little less on Facebook because I'm trying to pare that down. I got inundated with too many people back in the day and now i scroll through my feed i'm like i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you but thank you for offering all your opinions that i don't care about right because that's what we do on facebook now Just yeah i tend to respond to a lot of people as you know what can you remind me where i met you um mm -hmm. i do have a, a facebook page and a group which i'm pretty sure you do as well for your podcast you did not promote your podcast which i think you totally should um you know, episodes, where we could communicate inside the group, especially if you want to talk about if you want to talk about media, if you want to promote your media, you could join our group Media Litter Sandwich on Facebook. Um, just be part of the community. Uh, don't just drop drop your videos or your links and leave. Actually say something and look at other people's things and say something, even if it's only like two different uh, uh, different threads, and then you drop yours, that's okay, because then you're part of the community. I, I, no I'd rather problem. see that than just another empty slot on my friends. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I want people to be engaged, right, ultimately. Yeah. And that's why that's why Facebook was really cool for a while, and now it's significantly less cool. LinkedIn groups is the same way. Businessgrowthtime.com. 
Is I was waiting for that. I gave you the perfect segue. You did, you I did. gave you the perfect segue. You teed it up, and I was slow to knock it out of the park, but it's still going. <laughs> Still going. <laughs> I got to admit, though, we had like three really awesome segues this show, and I did not want to call that out because what's a great way to kill a segue? Dude, that was such a great segue. <laughs> Shut up! You ruined it! <laughs> That's awesome. Cool, man. Good times, fellas. Um, thank you again for having me on. I really do yep. appreciate it. Well, one more time, where, where can people find you? You can find me at trybean.com. You can find me at businessgrowthtime.com. Or you can find me at your favorite social media site. And I'm pretty much Terry Bean on all of them, except for Instagram. I think I'm Try Bean there. Gonna have to find you on Instagram. And yeah, follow you up, man. Sneaky all the other man. Places, sneaky. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a lousy photographer. Instagram's not really my medium. Yeah. So I don't have the I don't have the eye like you guys probably do. Well, you know, one person there. one person I know that loves Instagram and posts some great things is right next to me, and he is Crazy Mark at crazymark.com. And of course, I'm Toden at Toden.com, YouTube.com slash Toden K. And, you know, you can find Media Layer Sandwich at MediaLayerSandwich.com and a lot of different podcast sites. The other day, I was just going through them. Hey, where do you listen to podcasts? And I, and I would see if we were on it. And we we're on a lot more podcast sites than I thought we were on. So if we're not there, let us know. Or just go to our website where you can see the full videos or download the audio. You know we'll be there. And let us know what you think. Rate us on your favorite app. Subscribe to us. And join our Facebook group even if you want to promote yourself or just ask us questions. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed our discussion. And may, may the, the algorithms, algorithms be in your, your favor. favor.